What's up, everybody, and welcome to Real Time for the real everyday movie fan. I'm Ryan Murphy. And I'm Josh Williams. And today we're giving you a real time review of Blair Witch. Now, Blair Witch was apparently directed by Adam Wingard and stars Who the Heck Cares. Yeah, uh, who really cares? Now, a bunch of kids. I had, uh, <laughs> as with many of our films, Josh is, is, goes out a lot more than I do. So, uh, as with many of our films, I will, be inter- I will be interviewing Josh over his thoughts on the film. And Josh, I think I can have a sneaking suspicion how a film called Blair Witch, the latest sequel to the Blair Witch Project after so many years, how good of a movie it was. What, what would your overall score be? Before I get my score, I'll say this. I, have been, I was really excited for this movie. The buzz, the initial buzz around this movie was that it was amazing. It was one of the scariest films in a very long time. It will, you know, re... re uh, I don't know, re-invigorated the franchise. Re- yeah, reinvigorate the horror franchise, and uh, it, it, it doesn't. <laughs> no, I'm giving this a 5 out of 10, and only it's that high for a specific reason, which I'll tell you later. This movie was so disappointing, and it's, this is actually the first movie. I didn't have a physical negative reaction like I did with either Norm of the North or The Darkness, but this is the first movie I think this year that really pissed me off with a lot of its filmmaking decisions, a lot of its plot detail decisions, a lot of its... Um, just overall decision making of the movie, uh, and it pissed me off up until the very end, which was probably the best part. The last 20 minutes was the best part. I'll get into that. Extremely disappointing. It actually kind of really pissed me off. So, what was, uh, what was particularly uh, just so bad about? Okay, so if you guys have been following us at all, I love filmmaking. I love learning about it. I love how filmmaking is done and what to look for when you're watching a film. I enjoy that. That's me. Uh, when I was watching this movie, okay, this is obviously a found footage film. And what they went for in this movie was the sound effects in this movie. This really pissed me off. It really did because with a found footage film, you're not going to have like extremely heightened sounds. Even in a post-production, if you're doing a found footage, like if you're doing just a normal camera work with what cameras they had, which was a Canon DSLR and like some cameras with uh, microphones in like their ears and such, mm-hmm. You're not going to get that amazing amount of sound, especially if the DSLR didn't even have a, a, a microphone attached to it. Right. And yet the hi- the sense the sounds were so heightened and so crisp. It basically sounded like a regular <coughs> movie. It did, even and though it, it was supposed to be shot on a camcorder. Yes, basically. it kind of pissed me off because it's like, okay, this is the sound effects. I will admit they were freaking awesome. They were creepy. They were crisp. They were they were great. But for what you're going for, you can't do that. And it really pissed me off just on a note for me. And the other thing that kind of really made me mad was. Again, if in the Blair Witch Project, you know how when they would cut from scene to scene for the found footage, they had like a like a jolt in between the transitions, like a, like a, like a like there's some sort of disturbance. Sure. They might they they I mean if they're in the woods, that might be okay. But for the, what they had, which was the the really nice camera of what they had, uh, they did those transitions even before they went to the woods, and that kind of made me mad because <laughs> DSLR won't do that from transition to transition. It just won't. From like turning it on and turning it off, it just did it for the effect of the movie to help it make it more creepy or whatnot. And you just you don't do that. I'm sorry. Uh, Chronicle did it just right. I mean, they didn't have those kind of weird like transitions in between shots. Chronicle just it went from shot to shot, just like a real found footage film would actually kind of be. And I and I commend Chronicle for that, but this did not do that for me. Mm-hmm. That kind of that really pissed me off. And the other thing that pissed me off the most. The jump scares, the, 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 the misuse of jump scares was really pissed me off up until the very last 20 minutes of the movie. You would, just stereotypical, something, you know, big heightened sound and then be not, been, someone would jump and scream and it ended up being nothing. Just some person walking up behind them. And I'm just like, really? Are you really going to start using those dumbass jump scares, stereotypical of every single horror movie that's been, not every single, but the majority of horror movies that come out in the last five years. And you're trying to be something new and different or new and invigorating. No. I'm sorry, and that's what. And after it kept doing it and doing it constantly, it took me even more and more out of the movie, and that's where I got to that point where I, was, I told you I was getting, I was just pissed off completely. I was almost this close from watch, leaving the movie theater. But I will admit, I'm glad I didn't, and that's where I'm gonna go into my positives. Uh, initially, before the last 20 minutes, 25 minutes of the movie, I was gonna give it like a two and a half, or a three, but I will say, the last 25 minutes are. Oh, freaking scary. I almost said the F word. That, I will admit, very suspenseful, very well shot, very well, a lot of terror, a lot of actual real jump scares. It really made the suspense heightened, and I didn't expect it. And like you see in the trailers, when they start going into the house, that's what I'm talking about. When they get there, 
Wow, it was scary. And I, and I commend them for that. I just wish they would have done that throughout the whole movie. They would have done that. This movie could have very well, yes, been great and would have been a great addition to and reinvigorate the horror franchise properly, but it didn't. But I will say that if, you, if anything, if you can sit through the first hour and 10 minutes, the 20, 25 minutes are pretty awesome. But as a whole, as a movie, I can't recommend the movie at all. I just can't. It, it was literally, it's the first film of this year that pissed me off. But again, I will admit that last 20 minutes is scary. When you actually see the Blair Witch, is pretty cool looking. Like the, the, what she looks like is pretty freaking cool. And that's about the best I do. And the kids, I guess they were okay. The, the actors or actresses, if you want to say, were in it. They were, they were whatever. But then again, they did the stereotypical bad decision making throughout the movie of like, oh, don't do that. You know, something bad can happen if you do that. You know, just stuff like that. It's just very stereotypically bad decision making as far as the characters are concerned moving forward in the plot. So, I don't know. <clears throat> I would say you're probably going to see it if you, if you want to see it. I can't necessarily recommend it. I would say wait for it to come out on DVD because that last 20 minutes will still be just as scary at home, especially if you turn off the lights. Um, but if you want to see it, go ahead. But just be forewarned, the first hour and 10 minutes <laughs> or, hour and min- or the first hour of that movie will legitimately piss you off. Okay, sounds great. What did you think of Blair Witch? If you saw it, uh, please leave your comments in the section below and uh, please subscribe to our channel so you can see- receive more of our content in the future. Until next time, I'm Ryan Murphy. And I'm Josh Williams. And thank you for keeping it real. With real time.